Oh, something very strange happened there. Okay. Good morning. Happy Christmas. I'm coming through all kinds of places. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to give Owen a quick second to try and sort the sound. She's doing strange things in church. I don't know what it's doing online. Oh, here we go. Yay, there we are. We're all good. So, happy Christmas. Welcome to St. Martin's. I know it's a little strange. There's not many people in the building, but I'm really glad that you who have come have come. That's fantastic. Um, and welcome to those who've joined us online. I hope you're having a lovely morning. If you don't know me, I'm curate here. Uh, Matt Arvick is going to preach today um, and we have just a, a service to give thanks because whatever happens in these weirdest of times, it's still Christmas. We haven't cancelled Christmas um, and we are giving thanks that Jesus came to earth as a baby to be with us, to know us to love us and to reveal that love in all that he did and all that he continues to do in us. So, we've got some words first, please, Matthew. Shall we stand and say these kind of, we can't shout, we're not allowed to shout, but we can stand and say them firmly, can't we? Christ has brought us out of darkness to live in his marvellous light. Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome. We have come together in the presence of God our Father to rejoice in the gift of Jesus to us as the light of the world and to hear and to receive the story and message of the coming of Christ and to offer to God our thanksgiving. We're going to um, use our first carol as part of that giving thanks and rejoicing. I'm afraid though in the congregation we can't sing. However, we've got used to doing whatever we need to do to worship God without actually singing. There are streamers at the back. Enjoy them. Use them. Dance. Feel free to find some space and make the most of it. We're going to sing, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Just a couple of notices before we, um, before we move on with our service. Uh, our Saturday morning Zoom prayers are having a week off tomorrow. Uh, so no Zoom prayers tomorrow, but uh, next week, next Saturday, the 2nd, we'll start that again. And our uh, Sunday service this week, uh, so in two days' time, will be at 10.30. It's a joint service. Uh, really grateful to Andrew and to Helen for uh, running that this week. So it'll be an all-age joint service, 10.30 on Sunday. Back to our normal pattern next Sunday, the 3rd, at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Oh, I'm back again. <laughs> oh. Are we all right? There we go. I'm just going to keep going and let Owen do what he needs to do. There we go. So it's time to come, even though uh, this is a day for rejoicing, of course it is. We rejoice because we know we need Jesus. We know that we needed him to come and do what he did for us on the cross, to make things right for us with God. So we're going to, as part of this rejoicing, we're going to come to God and say sorry for the things that we know we've done that we shouldn't have done the things that have pushed God away from us, the things that mean we need Jesus. So let's uh, use these words on the screen, please, Matthew. I'll say the words in white if you would say the words in yellow. God, our Father, you sent your Son who loves us so much. Forgive our failure to love him and others. Lord, forgive us. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Lord, forgive us. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive our failure to respond. Lord, forgive us. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, has anybody brought, has anybody opened any presents? Our house, we got up a bit late this morning, so it's all been a bit rushed. But has anybody opened some presents already? Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, let's have... Has anybody brought one with them? Lucas, have you got one? Oh, there's a scarf. A very, very nice scarf. Lucas, what have you had? Do you want to hold it up? Oh, nice. Very good. Ours are fantastic. Ooh, Lucas, you'll be tough ones to talk to. Excellent. What else does anybody have? Oh, I'm, I'm getting people on live stream. There's jumpers being shown to me. A very fetching Christmas jumper. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, and another Christmas jumper from Wendy. Excellent. This is good news. Oh, have I got... Is, oh, no. Benny wasn't... I thought Benny was going to come and show us something, but no, he's just... He's, he has got a very, very fine Christmas jumper on too. Yes. Excellent. So... Live stream people, it would be great if you want to pop something in the comments to say what your presents were. That would be lovely. Um, Owen seems to have had, this is my son Owen, seems to have had lots of shirts. I don't know what people are saying about his dress sense. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and a cap as well. You brought your special cap, didn't you? Yes, he does like a cap, my younger son. Okay. And I've had some nice earrings. I brought them. I think Matt's had a present he's going to share with us, haven't you? He doesn't even know what it is yet. So anything could happen. Okay. Right. So here's a little present from Kate and Matt and I to you. We wanted to tell the story of Christmas in a particular way. 
And we thought, what do we do? And we thought, well, actually, we've already done some work um, on telling the story in kind of a, 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 an all-age-friendly way, because we did um, Christmas Unwrapped with our two primary schools in our parish uh, earlier this month. Um, and one of the things that happens in Christmas Unwrapped is that we get to do a wrap. Christmas wrap. Come on, guys. I know it's early, but, you know, it's a Christmas wrap. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's possibly less Stormzy, more Santa, um, for which we apologise. But we thought, just to kind of encapsulate, see if you can, how much of the story you can capture from this extraordinary piece of art that you're about to witness. <laughs> and we're just going to go and hide in the back room and just die quietly. I listen up you all, I got a story to tell Beginning with Mary and the angel Gabriel Now Gabriel was sent by God to the earth To tell her the news of a miracle birth That she would have a baby, the son of the most high Okay God said Mary, she knew it was no lie Check, Check it, it out, out. huh, see, see what, what it's worth, worth. What, what you, you gonna, gonna do about, about the miracle birth? birth? Check, Check it out, out. huh, see, see what it's worth What you gonna do about a miracle birth? birth? When Joseph heard that Mary was gonna have a baby, he was most disturbed and he started thinking maybe I ought to leave this woman, they'll think the child is mine, but an angel came and tell him that the baby was divine. Don't worry Joe, be happy, cause God has blessed your life. So Joseph said that's cool man and took Mary for his wife, check, check it, it out. out. Huh, see what it's worth, what you gonna do about the miracle birth, and check it out. Huh, see what it's worth. What, what you gonna, gonna do about, about the miracle birth? A, a, a little later on, the couple moseyed down to rip the name of Bethlehem town. They tried to find a room, but they both could stay. But there wasn't any room, so they stayed up in the hay. The only place they found was a stable out back. So the king of creation was born out in a jack. Check, Check it out, huh? See what it's worth. What, what you gonna, gonna do about, about the miracle birth? birth? Check it out, huh? See what it's worth. What you gonna do about the miracle birth? Some shepherds on a hillside were in for quite a shock When an angel said, yo dudes, I'm gonna rock the flock There's a new boy baby who guys will go and see He is someone special and will set the people free They all believed the angel, they didn't think it odd So they hurried off to Bethlehem and met the Son of God Check it out, huh, see what it's worth What you gonna do about the miracle birth? But check it out, huh, see what it's worth what you gonna do about the miracle birth? There are those who think that the story is true. Some kind of fairy tales the kids listen to. You'll find it in the Bible, not in a storybook. So why not check it out and take a closer look? Cause the baby in the manger grew up to be a man. Destroyed the works of evil, that's God's rescue plan. Check it out, huh, see what it's worth. What you gonna do about the miracle birth? Check it out, huh, see what it's worth. What you gonna do about the miracle birth? Check it out. Huh, see what it's worth What you gonna do about the miracle birth And check it out Huh, see what it's worth What you gonna do about the miracle birth To see what Get ordained, they said <laughs> It's a great idea, they said Oh boy that's like number 593 of things we do for Jesus. <laughs> Whew, okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, we, felt, we figured it was unfair for the children at school to have seen it and you not to, so that was our little gift to you. Uh, Catherine, quickly, come and restore some decorum to bring our reading. <laughs> Chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that had taken place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own hometown to register. 
So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, we'll need to do the Advent candles very soon before the wreath actually burns down. So uh, let's do that right now, I think. I might have to blow them out straight afterwards. So uh, you think it's going to be okay? Okay. As long as you've got a bucket of water. Okay. So the final candle in the Advent wreath we think about Jesus, who is the light of the world. A short prayer on that, together. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Fantastic. Let's, let's pray, shall we, as we look at God's word together. Lord God, we ask you in this short time you would just speak to our hearts and minds. We'd hear something fresh about your amazing story coming to earth, Lord Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. Now, I'm about to take my life into my hand. Am I, what's, what's the expression? Yeah, that's right. Because I've been given a present, I have no idea what this present is, and I'm about to open it live, as it were. So, okay. Um, Okay. I won't tell you who it is from, just in case. It explodes. No, it doesn't. Okay. Ah, all new dad jokes. I, uh, (laughs) thanks Kate and Dan, I don't know quite how to take that. Uh, should I read one out? Uh, no, I probably know them. Uh, my, my dad said, I always loved the alphabet soup when I was young, but it was just him putting words in my mouth. Oh. Okay. Okay. That sounds about the level of it. Anyway, so 
This year's uh, Christmas uh, theme has been Light and Hope. I'm sure you've seen that in a lot of the posters we've been putting out there. And last night at the Midnight Communion, uh, we thought about light. And uh, right now we're going to think about hope. So we've, uh, we've thought about what we've had for Christmas. I hope you got what you hoped for. On one level we say possibly yes. On other levels perhaps no this year. Um, perhaps your hope this morning is for a short talk. Well, you know, you know the definition of <laughs> the definition of Christian hope is to expect with certainty. So good luck with that. <laughs> uh, no, I, obviously I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, but you know, we have seen people coming and looking at our sign outside that just has simply has the word hope there. It's really attracted people. We've had people come along, take photographs of it. Um, and we, we noticed on Facebook during this last week, I think it was, and if you're watching, thank you particularly for the comment. Someone wrote on the Facebook, the local Facebook page, that they'd done a tour of lights in the area and they ended driving past St. Martin's, which, and I quote, made me feel like there is hope to come. So, isn't that wonderful? Really wonderful. So, Sandra and I, we were thinking about, well, well, what about the word hope? You know, could we think of, today, think of things which start with each letter, what people call an acrostic? And we came up with some ideas. And what I'd encourage people online, and maybe yourself as well, to think about is if I use the letters of hope, maybe you can come up with an acrostic as well. So, let me read out what we, Catherine so beautifully read out for us already. Verse 4, so Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged of the line and the house of David. Our first is this, hold on people, expect. See, hope there? Hold on, people. Expect. The people of Israel were expecting their saviour. They'd been waiting for at least 250, maybe longer than that, years. And that's why this passage strongly emphasises that, you know, Jesus was all part of that prophecy. He was, you know, fulfilling that prophecy. But it's not just that. It's not just that. And we thought about this last night. It goes right the way back. When everything went wrong in the garden, we think about the Garden of Eden as a, as a similar way of thinking about how things shattered in this, work, this world. And from that moment onwards, God was finding a way to restore his creation, to recreate his creation. His mind was on us the moment we, the creation fell that we wouldn't bear the consequences of our own bad decisions. Because, boy, do we make bad decisions. For the waiting Israel, I suspect, to coin a phrase from a Christmas song, they'd stop keeping the dream alive. I know that's Abby's favourite Christmas song. They stopped keeping the dream alive. They just forgot about it. There may have well been some that actually did keep going on that. So how does that feel for us right now on Christmas Day 2020, after the latest round of changes, and hope seems so near, we may feel it slightly drifting away, and the prospect of that in the new year. We need hopeful expectation. Hold on, people, expect. Hold on, people, expect. Because our future is beyond, those who believe in Jesus, our future is beyond a physical cure. It's about our spirits. It's about a spiritual cure for our eternity. Now, of course, we want and we're desperate for that, uh, that, uh, that process to come through. Of course we are. But with our hope, Christian hope, is hold on, people, expect so our next one is, uh, we'll come on to that in one moment. So 
there is the healing in the eternal. And the next acrostic, the shepherds were told, this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then, suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whose favor rests, his favor rests. When the angels had left them, and then, sorry, when then the angels left them and gone up into heaven. So it was a sign. It was a sign for the shepherds in the middle of this difficult time in history of Roman occupation. It was a sign of hope. It wasn't just about putting politics right. For us, it isn't just about putting Brexit right. It's about something greater and deeper. It's a sign of true, true hope. I'll have my next one up now. Heaven's own perspective is eternity. You see, they had, those angels had an angel eyes view of the whole thing. They saw the whole of the picture. Now, I do believe this, that our greatest peace for the new year, our greatest hope for the new year, can't be brought on through breathing exercises or silence or whatever tools you use. They're good things. I'm not knocking them. Our true peace can only be found in Jesus and seeing it from the angel's perspective. Heaven's own perspective is eternity. Verse 15 says, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Now, some people say that shepherds were the lowest of low in the society of the time. I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. But certainly, they were normal people. You know, Mary was a normal young girl. Joseph was a normal girl. Young, girl, young guy, everyday people. And they were called to extraordinary news. So my next one is this. Hope is outstretched, hope is outstretched purposefully to everyone. Hope outstretched purposely to everyone. This hope isn't just for those who are religious. This hope isn't just for the people who are extraordinary. They aren't for, it isn't for the rich, it isn't for the poor. It is outstretched for everyone. The hope on the sign that we're talking outside about is outstretched to the community here. It's stretched out to you right now. Now, as a, this next year for St. Martin's is a year of mission. We're thinking about how we're going to tell those stories. Verse 18 says, All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said. So let's share our hope, like the shepherds shared their incredible stories of hope as they met this Christ child. They didn't know everything that was going on. They didn't understand it all. But they could reach out. They could reach out to those around them. You don't have to be a theological genius to talk about your faith. You just need to tell your story of what Jesus has done in your life. Don't you? Do you know the thing about that is, and I won't go on, I promise, but the thing about that, that is, is this. People can argue with theology. They can talk about God and him being here or not. They can't talk down your personal experience of what God has done in your life. So it's really key to see that, to bring that. And my final one. So actually, you've almost got your, your, your hope. It was relatively short. My final one is this. Someone to help me with these, and I really love this one. However overwhelming, promises are everlasting. However overwhelming the situation is, his promises are everlasting. Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which they had been told about. I am sure there have been times in this last week you have felt overwhelmed. 
I mean, I certainly have. And yet, however overwhelming sometimes life seems, God's promises to us in Jesus are everlasting. Hoping with expectancy. Christian hope. Because God in Jesus defies all the tragedies of this life, no matter how difficult they may be, with his hope. So be like Mary. Let's remind ourselves of these things. Like the shepherds, let's continue to meet in person or online to keep reminding ourselves of the good things God has done and is doing and will do. So, my four are this for you to remember this morning. You come up with your own ones. Think if you can do an acrostic. But here they are. Hold on, people. Expect. Heaven's own perspective is eternity. Hope outstretched purposefully for everyone. And however, however overwhelming, God's promises are everlasting. So, if we have those moments, let's remember what the angel said. Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. God is with us. He is our light. He is our greatest and only hope. Amen. We're going to stand for our next carol. Uh, again, just use the space however you want to. We're going to sing A Little Town of Bethlehem.
believe. Let's say these words together. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and calls us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Richard is going to lead us in our prayers now. Let's sit. this special day when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the saviour of the world, we are called to pray. Father, I begin by thanking you for the settlement between uh, Britain and the rest of Europe that appears to be coming through over these coming days. St. Paul wrote, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Keep on praying and guard your prayers with thanksgiving. I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to pray now for about one minute. I invite everyone to pray to God in whatever way you feel most comfortable. I say we're going to pray now for about a minute. Father God, we lift before you all who need your healing touch. Help us to care for those who are lonely, in pain, or struggling in these difficult times. Amen. gather all of the prayers of our hearts, all the prayers that Richard has said in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're coming towards the end of our service. Uh, and there's a little bit of movement. If you have taken your coat off, can I suggest you put it back on? Um, and we just couldn't face the thought of no carols where everyone could sing. So we're going to go out the back and we're going to sing Hark the Herald. Not quite yet, but just be ready for that moment. Um, as you leave, we're going to go out the back doors in an orderly fashion, socially distanced. Um, there are some sheets with the words on. So 
so you haven't got to rely on, I'm sure you all know the words anyway, but take, so don't go yet, don't yet get, but even so, as you go to grab a sheet, um, I'm sure that um, Matt and Rachel and Sandra will give us an extended introduction to get ourselves out. Um, and we're going to just stand outside the back doors so we can hear the music. People online, you'll get the, uh, the full effect of, of the band, which is great too. And we are going to sing together for once this Christmas. Okay. However, we're going to, I'm going to say a blessing first. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to share the grace together. Do share online as well. And, uh, and we're going to start to make our way out once we've said these words. Have a great Christmas. Feel free to disperse once we've sung. Have a lovely Christmas day. And we will see you soon. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we go out the back doors, the sheets are on there. Take them home with you, please. Don't give them back to us. If we can go around this way, that would be great. Follow the one way. They're on the chairs down here. I can't hear my guitar, by the way, guys. It's all going to go swimmingly. They're all going out through the back door right now. So we're going to play.
Christmas, everyone. Lovely big hooray outside. Thank you. No worries. Thank you.